in a universe where life does not end at death. We explore the infinite possibilities forged by our very minds. Welcome to our Thadian Anthologies. Greetings, fellow travelers and storytellers. Welcome to the Arthadian Anthologies podcast, where I, MS Arthadian, dive into the ever-expanding universe I'm developing and the deeper meaning behind it all. It is time for the final entry in the Kina Jolanth trilogy. So far, you've witnessed the path of the phoenix through the eyes of Kina and how she is coping with her newfound title. But it's not just a title. It's an ancient tradition that is passed down through generations of Cantor. But before we start the final session... Still perched inside the cargo bay. You can purchase a Kina t-shirt at arthadiananthologies.com slash shop. There will be a 15% discount up until April 12th, 2022. Now, without further ado, here is the final session with champion Kina Jalanth. For three cycles, you train inside the CAA to become a command operative. Working closely with Muzo outside of your normal regiment, he was placed in the Enforcer Regiment, but he still trains you to become a worthy champion. You can still see the envy in his eyes. But assisting you in your training gives him a sense of pride, a sense of accomplishment. After the first five months of training, there is a dream that comes to you at night. With your predecessor piloting a space pod in a massive battle against counter command. You remember learning about this battle in a core history class, known as the Battle of Caius. In this battle, Champion Terax Ent infiltrated into a counter-command warship where he was able to take down several dozen enemy forces and reach the bridge where he commandeered the vessel. All of this coming through your mind as you awakened to newfound skills that will assist you in your future missions. Another two arrays pass, with you continuing to train under the operative regiment. However, your training becomes hyper-focused on on specializations, as you have your first choice. Would you like to be a technician? A doctor, a pilot, a spy, or an archivist. Kina would like to specialize in being a pilot. All right. Upon your specialization, you spend the next two and a half arrays focused on studies with the choice of handing over the mantle of the champion coming up. You receive two more memories of Terax before your first cycle as a champion concludes.
the first memory consists of your predecessor speaking to the Archrector about how he doesn't know if he will be around much longer. The war has no end in sight, and it seems like he's getting closer to finding out why. Karakin then asks Terex, If you are lost before you finish your hunt, what cantal will be the next champion? Terexon looks down. I cannot speak for Venus. But if I were her, I would choose one who is atypical. One who can infiltrate the ranks of core command, but be inconspicuous as, as to not draw attention to themselves. This would allow them to find what they are looking for, and hopefully... They aren't brash and hard to get along with. He would have followed orders, but skeptical enough to know corruption when they see it. After this memory, the last one comes one month before the cycle closes. In this memory, You watch as Terex is on a war-torn world, sneaking up to a counter-command outpost. You get the sense that he's not supposed to be there, but he has followed Admiral Volton to the outpost. As he eavesdrops on the Admiral's meeting with the leader of the counter-territory, you over here. Is the plan still in effect? Or shall I consult the master key? Everything is in motion. The code has changed, however, due to an unforeseen circumstance. It is now 562-767. What unforeseen? Suddenly, a codex notification sounds off in the chamber as you hear a slight chuckle. It seems we have a guest here. Volton veers toward Terax as the champion quickly flies away as quickly as, po- as quietly as possible. Through his own perception, there are no signs that anyone had seen him. Terax thoroughly made sure to take out all surveillance within a 10-mile radius before infiltrating the outpost, and even then, someone still caught him. As the memory closes... You watch as he flies his pod away, but is shot down, just like from the path of the phoenix. Once the final month passes, in the first cycle, you are summoned back to the church of Carrick. With all the rectors there, Carrickin approaches you. With your first cycle as champion through, I'll see you, Kina. Do you still wish to drop the champion mantle? Or do you want to see this through? I I want to see this through. With you staying as champion, to see it through, the next two cycles flow by. Your training completes with you becoming a full-fledged operative in Core Command. Your squadron will start under the Fleet Titan Barricade, led by Admiral Optina Mize. But as stated previously, once you've shown your worth as a squadron, you will report to the 405th Legion. Your squadron consists of the following. Commander Commander Asla, who is a Yen Enhanced. You have met her before. All all the people listening to the podcast have met her as well. Um, Enforcer Viking. 
V I V Y K E N, who is prime. Then you also have a technician, a technical operative. His name is Quive Tuli. Q U I V E T U apostrophe L Y. And he's a Newgonian scientist. And as for Muzo. He is assigned to the Estevez garrison under General Plutel with the two of you parting ways. You recall the path of the phoenix and how it caused a rift between the two of you. But before you leave for your assigned directive, you get one last meeting with him. Returning to the 21st stem of the Pine Towers, Muzo is inside there. And you come in after a day of training, one of your last marks of training. And Muzo is just kind of sitting there. And he has his codex laying laying on the table. And he looks over at you and it's like It looks like we're all going to be going our separate ways. I I wish we weren't. I tried to convince them to let us let me at least go to the barricade. But apparently General Plutel requested my presence specifically there but I uh, I suppose everything will go fine with you as champion you know <laughs> yeah Muzo yes If you were champion, what what would be your number one priority? To liberate as many worlds as I can, using the backing of core, core command. And I'll end up becoming one of the greatest leaders throughout core command. So they'll follow me. But I'm sure you probably had the memories come through, yes? You haven't really told me much about them. A few of them. Have you told anyone about them? I would have, uh, yes. Have, would you, would you have, who would you have told about? Well, him. You would have told him? Yeah. Not about, like, the corruption one, but about whatever skills I get and whatever... Yeah. Well, he, okay, he, he looks at you, he's like, I mean, you've told me a, a, a little bit, but I mean. I've only gotten like three. Okay. Or something like that. And, uh, he's like, have you told the attractor about them? It was, wasn't it the Grand. Admiral who wanted me to this is out of the Grand Admiral wanted you to report to, to him yeah to him about certain memories yeah I've only told the Grand Admiral would you have told the Grand Admiral, Admiral everything well I already know that it seems like he was close with with uh the last champion yes Rex. yes but would you have told him everything not about the code. Not about the code? Not the code, no. Okay. But I would have told him about, like, what happened to Terex. 
like where would, he died. Would you have told him about how he was following Plutel? No, he wasn't following Plutel. He was following Volton. Sorry, Volton. Yeah. Would I have told him that? Is that what you're would you? Have, yeah. Would you have told him that and that Volton was is conspiring and basically with, killed him with counter with counter command? Um. Because that's what you learned. Did I not think Terex told him first before he left? Didn't it seem like he told him first? No, it seemed like literally right as he was trying to escape from there, Mm -hmm. he died. Mm -hmm. That was what you got from that. Um, So I guess maybe I wouldn't have told him that then. If I didn't think he already knew, I probably wouldn't have. But if I thought he knew, so I guess no. Okay. Um... Don't know if I no, I wouldn't tell Muzo. But I will say Muzo, just make sure you know who to trust. I mean I trust you. I trust you too. Okay. I guess so, uh, yeah. How do you think you'll do without me? Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do without you. And he's like, This is unfair. How can they keep me here on the harbor and not out there? I thought, wait, I thought he was going with Plutel. He's in part of his. Uh, the Estevez garrison. Vo Estevez. Is that. That's, oh, that's that's on, on the harbor. harbor. Yeah. And General Plutel, he's not an admiral, so he's not like he's general, going up. Yeah. Well, I will still, I will still keep, you know, talking them too, trying to get you back. All right. We'll see. Maybe I can like rise up with my with whatever squadron I am assigned to. If I am assigned to a squadron. And as this happens... Wait. Wait, wait, wait. You do get a... You get a... On your your codex. Ah, duty calls. I'm gonna grab, like, his hands. I'm just... Will you promise me that... His talents, you mean? His talents. (laughs) Will you promise me that when we meet again that we'll, st- we'll still be friends of course why wouldn't we I don't know I know things can change people so okay just promise me that you won't die Or else I'm going to have to become the next champion. I promise if you promise. I mean, I'm not going to really die very much when I'm not even in the battle. I mean, what what is going on here in, in the harbor? That is, that, that's happening out there. There's no war here. Sure, maybe there's some some kind of, some issues with the Nagonians or something like that. But uh, roll a a lore. lore, yeah. Do do you have a pillar codex? I have a research codex. Okay. So, I mean, I could specifically use it to research whatever is going on with Nagonians. Yeah, you could like go and do that if you want. That's just by rolling a strategy or an analyze check, though. So I don't know uh, if yeah. that counts. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you wanted to do if you wanted to do a computer's check uh, instead of an, instead of a lore check, you could do a computer's check to look it up. So if your computer's is higher, that's only a plus one higher. Uh, so I guess. Okay. Yeah. It's that that additional plus one is. Okay. Good. But you, 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 you were getting a call, 
and it went to voicemail. That's fine. Uh, it was from Commander Asla. Great. Uh, <laughs> uh, six, 17. 17? Uh, you you learn, as you kind of like research a little bit about what is going on the harbor, you said something about the Nugonians, you look up uh, the Nugonian capital environment, uh, Vokraya, um, and learn about how the Zalek dynasty is becoming an issue and they were wanting to they were wanting to get actual like military funding uh, apart apart from how a like, core command like separate from core command so not like core command being there as like as base helping and all that, all that stuff and also they're starting to block off an entrance for any uh any other species other than Ugonians into into certain cities within the capital environment. I'm just saying, we'll keep those Zelics at bay. (laughs) Yeah, whatever. Um, We'll see. And as it happens, you do get uh, another Usually, probably answer that before you get in trouble. Yeah, okay, yeah I mean, you're the champion, but you're not impervious <laughs> to their rules. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll answer it. I'll answer it. You answer it. Mm-hmm. Well, there you are. Um, are you coming to the uh, the station? Yeah, I'm. I'm just finishing up here. All right. Well, we were we are getting our first directive, actually. Apparently, so we're we're gonna need to report to the admiral, Admiral Optina. Okay, I'll be right there. All right, you. Do you leave right away, or you see, this was just sitting there. I'll see you soon, hopefully. Yeah, sure. Um, see you soon. I hug him. You you hug him. He kind of gives you a hug back, and you begin to head out. And as you head out to the base. You go to the harbor, back to Pillar Command in Vo Estevez, where the HQ is. The recruitment center technically is there. Um, there's also the, the Command Acolyte Assembly, but you're you're mainly going to the the main HQ where you're supposed to report to your squadron. As you get there, you enter inside and you see Commander Asla is just standing around with, like, talk, talking to Quive. And Quive looks over towards you. It's like, Ah! Hello, champion! How is everything? I'm good. You're It took you long enough. Asla comes up to you. It's like, okay, we, we need to go now. Uh, where, where's Viking? Oh, so I'm not the last one here? That's no excuse. All right? She points at you. <laughs> and Quive is just like, <laughs> I am always on time. <laughs> and... Isn't there usually five in a squadron? Uh, it can... It ranges like between... we don't have a... It ranges between a, uh, three to three to five. You said he was... Uh, Viking was an enforcer, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, after a couple more moments, you see Viking kind of walk in. His hands are in his pocket pockets, um, and he has like a few 
hilts, like tech tech hilts on it on, on his on his person. And he's just walking up. And he's like, "Hey, how's it going? Uh, wake, waking me up really early. We need to report to Admiral Optimize, who is technically our admiral. So we need to get out of here." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, shut up. Okay, let's go." And you guys begin to uh, head over to the transport vessel that will take you over, and you see. The pilot on the transport vessel looks over. Is like, you you finally have everyone here. And Commander Asla is just like, yes, uh, everyone is here and reporting for duty. All right, and hop on in. And you see the pilot gets inside. Everyone kind of gets all situated, ready to take off for this situation uh you go to strap in you're like all right uh how many of you have flown off world before and and uh you see quiv kind of goes this is my first time i i i i'm excited for this all right cool um i'm i'm assuming everyone else has flown off world do i need to give any like procedures of how to Handle gravitational. Have you flown off? Would you say that you have flown off world before? Um, like taking a ship outside. Well, if I've been training to be a pilot, I would. Think yes, so. yes, yes. I, I, I would. I would say so. Yes. Okay. Then I don't say anything. Okay. And you kind of you you automatically like strap yourself in like go, go through the whole situation. Boom. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Kina, Kina. Sorry. Um, and as that happens, suddenly, the ship begins to start up. You feel the rumbling sensation of it begin to take off and lift off from the ground and then you blast off into the atm- the upper atmosphere of the harbor and as you go up you are leaving the pillars behind you don't know how long you're going to be up in space with your squadron going to a fleet titan and potentially going to many different worlds across the realms. What awaits you, you don't know. But apparently you're supposed to report to the Admiral about your first directive as a squadron. And as you see the vessel is able to escape the harbor's atmosphere you see the large massive planetary ring of the harbor and you begin to glide through this field of of asteroids and of of planetary satellites I should say and you see a a massive ship off in the distance the gravity kind of lifts lifts off as you as you feel uh, the harness k- keep you locked in and then you hear the artificial gravity gets turned on as you <laughs> shift back down and you see multiple other ships are also leaving and and go and coming into the harbors atmosphere and you see Viking looks back at you is like so uh, how, how much have you trained for all of this because you're going to be the one up, up up in the front right champion yeah I've, I've trained a lot for it I'm sure you've trained a lot 
trained a lot for yours being an enforcer as well. Yeah. And also I was like, what what are you getting at? Yeah, well we I can <laughs> I I don't know, I was just trying to make small talk. Jeez. Oh. And Qu- Quive is like quite quite interesting. I, I haven't been a, a part of your whole group situation for you know, however long you've you've been together, but I mean I'm, I'm excited to work alongside you all. And as I was just like, uh, what am I going to do with you? As you all fall into the hangar bay of the Fleet Titan barricade, you go through and you hear the station is beginning to, well, it, it gets pretty loud inside here. It is rather loud, and a lot of people are here. You aren't, you weren't expecting this place to be so big. It's like when you've visited the cosmic stations before. Um, it is ju- the the hangar bay is just is just as big as the cosmic stations. There are probably about uh, fifty different ships inside here, with a bunch of people going going in, in and out of them. They're mostly. Uh, they're mostly co- like command officer. Everyone here is command officer in in some form form of matter. Um, there occasionally you'll see you'll see uh, maybe a figurehead like a, like a leader or like a, a senator, but it, it's rare. Um, but as you will continue through here. Asla leads you guys through this hangar bay up to what looks like a a, a desk with a prime a prime male kind of kind of sit, sitting there. He has this this brownish hair, short short bra- brown hair. His his eyes are a uh, are hazel coloration, and he looks pretty pretty young. And he's like, "Hey, how, how can I help you?" And then you see Asla step up. And say, "We are here to report to Admiral uh, Admiral Mize about our first directive. We are uh, Squadron A sixty four. Okay, Squadron A sixty four. Ooh, um, all right. Yeah, Admiral Admiral Mize is in the brig currently. If you'd like to go report to her, uh, here is the." Uh, the layout of barricade, and you are good to go. All right, thank you. And Asla looks back at you guys and kind of like smiles and winks, and then begins to walk through into an elevator space where the crowd is no longer there. And you guys kind of all step inside, crunch up inside this elevator as it. Takes you up to the bridge, and as was like, I'm, I'm kind of ner- I'm kind of nervous, and Vikings like, don't be nervous. Gosh, oh, everything will be fine. Do you say anything? Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as you guys begin to reach the bridge, the door slides open and you see a lot of well you see a, a giant what looks like control room inside here with the admiral kind of st- standing before everyone asking questions to, to certain people as they're all kind of like piloting the massive titan this space is probably uh, probably about the size of um well, it, it it's probably about like a hundred feet wide, so it's it's pretty big. It's a pretty big big bridge. Um, and as you walk up, Commander Asla begins to speak, and she's like, uh, "Admiral Mize, uh, we are we are 
the squadron A64 reporting for our first directive. And the Admiral turns around and is like, A64? Ah, the champion squadron. And Azalek's like, yes, yes, uh, Kina Jalanth is here. And motions to you. He's like, ah, I've, I've heard good, good things about you all. I hope you are prepared for what I have in store for you. Uh, yes. He's like, please, uh, follow me to my to my chambers. And you see she begins to walk into the same elevator that you guys just went through, and you guys begin to follow her through, and she looks over and is like, so, um, champion and looks over at you. Are you ready to liberate? Yes, yeah, I am. We are. We are ready. And Asla's just like... <sighs> she's like looking around. Feels like... Like... She's not actually... Commander, yeah. Commander. And... The the door the door slides open into her into her chamber. You guys walk in walk into her chamber, and as I was like, oh, um, so uh, uh, Admiral, what is our first directive? Well, it seems as though we have a situation at hand. Um, one of our head scientists within core command has been taken for ransom by Count Command troops. Uh, their commander, Cater, uh, ha- has used a Nagonian ally of theirs to probe her in serving them. Uh, their coordinates place them on the frozen tundra of Command Colony Vekar. Be wary, they utilize powerful manipulation tactics, so make sure to bring back our scientists alive and destroy their base if possible and Viking's like yes destruction awesome and uh, you see Quive kind of bats him in the head he's like oh the fuck and he's like uh, any questions he's like yes uh, Admiral do we have the co- specific coordinates of a car Yes, uh, I'll, I'll be sending the coordinates to each of your codexes so that you get it. And make, be, be sure to dress warm. It's, it is a frozen tundra. And the commander uh, nods. Like, yes, Admiral, thank you. Thank you for this mission. Ma- and, and remember, your first priority is saving the scientist. And Quive is like, do we have a name of this scientist? Yes, uh, his name is... His name is uh, Aquor Light. We'll write that down. Alright. How do you spell it again? Uh, E-Q-U... O R apostrophe L I T E We must retrieve him as, as soon as possible. So, uh she looks over the All right, um so and I'll have the coordinates sent to you right away. Your your vessel will be in Hangar Bay A and uh, at slot, uh, okay, 32. 832. <laughs> and and they, every one of you nods to her and, and salutes. And you begin to walk out and... She's like, uh, may I speak to the champion alone? And as the looks over, it's like, um, she is the pilot, so we're going to need her to pilot the the ship to our coordinates. 
Admiral, apologies. Like, of course, uh, I'll, I'll speak to you when you when you return. I nod. And you open up to the into the the, the elevator, and it closes and goes to the hangar bay. And Isla just sighs, like you're very popular. Not by choice. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, well, I uh, didn't you get a chance to like change whether you wanted to be the champion or not? You had said that, didn't you? Yes, I I did get the choice later on. And Viking looks over. Is like, so why didn't you change? And Quive is like, oh, guys, shut up. Jeez, let her do her thing. Like, it's not her fault. It, it's okay. It, I think it was because it was The too door early opens to up. Me, right? And you see a bunch of people inside. And you guys begin to walk over to the hangar where the vessel that you're supposed to take, the specific... Um, Command vessel. You go over to hangar A32 and you reach this what looks like a medium sized craft. And it's it's a standard one. It's a but but a, a smaller version. It's it, it almost is like a pod. Um but it it's it's r- rather comfortable for you for you guys as you go inside the door op- goes and opens up and you see Guive kind of goes inside and begins to check check all the systems and you go inside along with Asla and Viking and Asla closes the doors so that the noise doesn't come in And you go up to the cockpit. And you begin to look at all the systems. Quive goes over and sits in the navigational chair. Uh, He's basically your co-pilot. And you go and sit in the... You mean... Okay, yeah. So he's like the navigator. Yeah. And then... And then... uh, Your... Your commander kind of steps behind you. He's like, all right, um... You, did you get the coordinates yet, Quive? He's like, yes, I'm going to plot them in cor- right now. Um, and you see he begins to start up the sequencer. And he's going to roll a navigation check. Rolled pretty well. Pretty well, pretty well. And as as the navigational, uh, he, he he goes and plots in the coordinates, and with that, you see Commander Asla goes over. Is like, um, do what? What is the the rundown of all the systems on this on this craft? And you see. He begins to look through everything. Um, it looks like we have... We have a vertical drive and a... Oh, we, we we have three drives. Vertical, quad, and a jump drive. And also, it seems like a few different field generators. We do have a... Uh, a shield generator and a um, stealth field as well, but the stealth field isn't as it's not one of the the more advanced ones. Uh, what what's the weaponry like? Yeah, what's the weaponry like? And you see, if I can kind of come over, it's like um, mainly cannons and rays. We don't have what what's the ray like? Uh, it's it's a it's an ion ray. 
All right. And and we have uh, radiation cannons. And you see, uh, uh, Commander Hassel is like, "All right. Um, well, do do you want were, to? Were you hoping there'd be something else? Who you talk? Who are you saying that to? Asla. Asla. Yeah. Asla's like, no. I mean, I'm just I'm just wondering what what we have at our disposal, okay. so that we can pr- properly make sure that we do what what is right in case we get cornered in space." Yeah, that Vikings like that doesn't sound right. Cornered in space? How can you get cornered in space? You get cornered in space if there's multiple ships are all around you. Oh, whatever. That's why you're the enforcer. Mm-hmm. And as this this begins, uh, as Lyle looks over, he was like, "Do you want to pilot us out of here?" Yes, ma'am. What? <laughs> Did she look at me funny or is no? She, she just okay. she just nods and then she begins to walk back mm-hmm. and begin to explore the the cool. rest of the vessel. How? What? What's the total? Tell me the total. One. Tell me the total. Eighteen, which isn't like horrible. Eighteen. Yeah, it's not bad. You begin begin recalling your training of how to start up certain vessels for quick reflexes. Does that have to be my primaries if I'm not in combat? Like, can I just use quick reflexes to help me? Yeah. Can I use quick reflexes? Sure, you you have it. I feel like I would even if like she would want to have help on her first try, no matter what. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. You spend the stamina, and you and you can do that. Yes. That's what quick reflexes is for. <laughs> okay. Well. Uh. So plus two. So twenty. Twenty. Yeah, you begin to recall all your training and activating all the ships, um, the, the ship's drives, basically. You, you, you activate the jump drive, and the ship begins to start up for you as you see it. Fly out. Sorry, I'm I'm grabbing the the lift off. The ship lifts off out of the hangar and then out into space. And and Quive is like, all right, we're gonna go through the quantum force. Um, so I mean, do, do you want to put it on autopilot or do you want to actually pilot us all the way over there? Um, I will pilot us there. All right. Well, I mean, the, the, there's an autopilot right there. If you need, if you need it, and you're like, you're like, I, I, I know, I know, <laughs> I know how to pilot a ship. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he stands up, and he's like, I'm gonna go check out my if, if there's any like you know, uh, repair stations or, or anything like that in here. And you see, Asla comes over and sits next to you. She's like, "So, how was your uh, how was your talk with Muzo?" Um, it was fine, you know. Unfortunately, that he couldn't be with us. You know, you're gonna have to, you know, open up to us. At some point, Kina. What do you mean? I mean, about? you're very, you're very quiet. You're just, you're, you're quiet about, about certain things, and I just want to make sure that you, you can trust me with certain information. I'm here 
to help. I'm your commander. I would hope you would trust me. Of course I trust you. Yeah, but I feel like there's certain things that you're... You hide. I mean, I've, I've noticed some things. Like what? Well, when... When anything comes up about Muzo or the champion, you kind of fall back into yourself. You don't really, you don't really like talking about it. And I mean, I, I, I'm not. I'm sure you've noticed that I don't like the fact that everyone sees you before they see me. I, I don't want to. Feel like I'm. I don't know. I don't know if that's selfish. No, it's it's not. I don't. I don't really like it either. I try to ignore it. Yeah. Well, I'll do my best to prevent it from happening. Prevent what? Well, not prevent it, but you know, to prevent what from happening. Well, like. Uh, putting like you know the focus back on you because you're the commander. Okay. That, th- thank you. I mean, you don't need to. I, I, I just try to. I don't know. I thought, I thought that maybe it would be different. I want to go. I want to go to the four hundred fifth legion, specifically, under the Grand Admiral, but. For now, I guess we're we we're, we're stuck here. Why do you want to be in the four hundred fifth legion? Well, because it's the it's the big one. It's it, it's the, the it's like the front line. It it's the most elite squadrons going and actually finding new command colonies and liberating them. Most of our time would be spent with making sure that people are are safe and secure rather than actually defending. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, this first directive seems more like it's an important one. And you continue to fly through. I think we can get there. I think if we if we complete this, then we'll, we'll be well on our way. Mm-hmm. And she kind of pats you on the shoulder. It's like, well, thanks for the talk. She stands up and walks out of there. And you begin to continue to drift towards the quantum force. I'd like you to roll, roll me a discipline will check. Okay. You know what that means. My rolls are sucking today. A 12. A 12. As you're sitting there, the space around you begins to sink into your conscious mind and you see your talons shift into what looks like the same talons as Terax and you're piloting and you see you're entering into one of the memories And then you hear and you go over and you tap on it and it shows something. It shows a a person appear. And that person appearing looks like a another a, a yen 
male. He stands there and he's like, Terax, I have some information for you. Let me hear it. Well, it seems that Volton is heading to a uh, one of the command colonies. You might want to intercept him. Like, uh, I can't intercept him just yet. But explain to me, what is he there going there for? I picked up chatter. I believe he's meeting with an ally of his within counter command. Counter command? But isn't he the one that's being targeted by counter command? They they have an inn or something like that. I'm not sure. I think this is the this has to do with something beyond counter command and core command. It might have to do with why this is still going on. Why ha- why he hasn't been dealt with? Like this entire war is a distraction. Do you know if if Echolo Tyke is a part of this? Not certain. But maybe you might be able to get some information if you go there. I'll send you the coordinates correct right right now. And you see the <laughs> appears. It's like, thank you. Of course, Terex. It's always been a pleasure. Farewell, my friend. And you see it <laughs> goes away. It's like <sighs> Damn it. You see, he moves over to the sequencer and begins to... (laughs) Plossing the coordinates. And then... (laughs) Jumps. And then you feel a hand on your shoulder. (sighs) Hey, are you alright? You look like you were drifting off there. Yeah, I'm fine. I just... I had gotten a, a vision. Oh, oh, and you see he goes into town and is like, I hope you, uh, uh, what, what was it, a good vision? What, 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 what happened? It wasn't bad, it was just of the previous champion. champion. Yes, I mean, I've, 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 I've done some reading about champions since I joined this squadron. You do want to tell me, or do you want to tell someone? Do you want to go tell uh, Asla? I can, I can watch the the ship here. We could turn on autopilot if you like. Do I just before I get up or do anything else? Is those coordinates where we're going? The coordinates w- where you saw it, um, they are not where you're going. Okay. Wait. So, do I recognize those coordinates? Though, like, do I know where it was at? No, no. no. But you're assuming it was that one world. Yeah. And do I remember them? Uh, like if I ask him to just check what the coordinates are really quick. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can let him know. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll I'll tell Asla in a second. But do you know where these coordinates are? And then I'm gonna give it to him. Yeah, you kind of like you you typed it on on your codex and you show it to him. It's like they're not where we're going, right? No, no, none. This is completely. Completely different realm altogether. This isn't synchronous. Okay. Um. Well, this this these coordinates were inside your vision. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll I'll do I'll find what I can about it. If you if you want me to, is that what you want me to? Or should I be talk to Asla before we do anything? We'll probably talk to Asla first. Okay. Um. I'll I'll watch the I'll watch the system. We're we're we'll be we're probably about thirty minutes away from the quantum force, so Okay, I'm gonna turn autopilot on. Okay, you turn autopilot on. You see Clive kinda sits there and monitors the systems as you go over and you look around the ship. Um you go over to the commander's chamber and you see Asla is there and she's checking all the codexes 
uh, on, on on a shelf, and she's like, "Cool," and she like looking through them, and then the door opens up, and you walk inside, and she looks over like, "Oh, hey, um, what's up?" I know, I know. You asked, you wanted me to tell you if I get any any visions. Of course. Did Did you get one? I did. Oh, and she puts the codex down and she sits down and is like, oh, okay, dude, let's talk. What, what, what was it about? It was just, I was piloting at Wool as, you know, the previous champion. Okay. Terex. It wasn't anything, like, wasn't a big deal. Okay, so, like, nothing happened? No, it was just, it was the Grand Admiral, right? No. Who was the one talking? Did no, I recognize was, him? No, you didn't recognize him. It was just a random yen. Apparently a friend. Uh, you go ahead and try to roll a uh, a lore check uh-huh. as you as you try to remember if you can Ooh, I Good. if you can think about like through your predecessor's memories. Yeah. Try to think about who that might have been. Well, I got a twenty-two. Twenty-two. Sorry, twenty. Yeah, 22. 10 plus 12. As you think about it, you begin to think long and hard. I'd like you to want me a discipline will check. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. You think about this, and then around you, everything kind of shifts, and you see standing before you instead of Asla, who is also a Yen. It's a male Yen. And you look at him, and he has a codex in his hand, and he's checking something out. He has this uh, optical lens o- o- over one of his eyes, and his other eye is this, this bright blue. I don't know why my Discord is open. <laughs> um, uh, his, his other eye is, is a, a bright blue, and he looks up at you. Um, at, at Terex. And... He's, he, it is the same man, the same, the same person that you saw. And he looks up, he's like, all right, we are, we are live and currently tracking. You hear yourself, Terax, go, good. Good. Keep on them. We need to figure out who is behind all this. Who is causing all of this. And what for. Do you, do you think that... Do you think that we'll be able to... Keep... Keep this on down low? Or should we tell... Or should we tell the Grand Admiral? I would like to tell the Grand Admiral, but... I don't think it is wise to do so. Then what should we tell him? Ah. We're chasing a lead on counter command. A lead toward where Echolo is located. Alright? 
perhaps we can try to find another way to mosey around the situation. I mean, maybe, maybe I can talk to, maybe I can talk to my mother. Your mother? You want to talk to her about this? She is part, she is on the, the runic council. Maybe I can figure out a way to get the runic council to help out. The Runic Council coming into the... I mean, I guess that makes sense, but... I feel like this is bigger than that. And if we brought the Runic Council in, it would just shine the light on everything. But my mother is... She can be rather... Rather uh, quiet about certain things. And find ways to go, go around the situation without saying the full truth. Alright, get, get her to... Check it out. And then suddenly you feel a hand nudge you. And you... Are you okay? Yeah, that was just an, another one. What does it look like? What does it, what does it happen? When, what does it look like to you when that happens? You look like you're drifting off, like you're falling asleep. What happened? Did, okay, so you 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 were trying to think about a name. Did you get a name? You didn't get a name, but <laughs> a mother. The the mother on of the them is on, is on the runic council. Council. I didn't get a name. Who who was talking to him? Um. Who's. Is there are are there any yen on the runic council? On the runic council? Uh huh. She has to roll. She's like, I don't know. I haven't. Woman yen, if that helps. Well, I, that's usually would be, but. <laughs> <laughs> There are, I only say that because I just saw male yen. So. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. Well, whoever it is, is a friend of the champions. Okay. Previous uh, champions. Any, anything else? I can, I can try to see if our, um, if Quive can look up who's on the Runa Council. Yeah, we or can. I, or we can try to figure out that out right now if you'd like me to. Sure. She goes and pulls out a codex. She begins to search it. She's like, ah. And as she searches it, she's like, okay, on the runic council there is five seats on the runic council. Uh, it doesn't specify their their race, but only names. Okay, well, yeah. I know maybe the name can sound more fin- feminine. Fin- nope. Uh, there, feminine? There's Amelia. Does that ring any bells? I didn't get a name. Okay, well, okay. There's Amelia, um, oh. Ariel, um, A, a Asuma. Are they all women? That's just three of them. You just said, yeah, there's three. So three out of five? Yeah, and then there's, uh, there's Aetherville. I know that one, that, I know that one for sure. That, that one's famous. You, I wonder if, well, if any of them have a Yen son. Are there any pictures? Well, if they had a Yen child then they must be a yen, yen yes and um and she yeah. checks if there's pictures She's ariel like, asuna asuma is that what you said okay there there is a yen there is a yen uh asuma 
Lana is. Okay. I believe she she's the one that did the. Uh, I mean, I, I I flunked my core history. Mm-hmm. Do Do you remember? Um. Want to roll a lore check? Sure. The one I keep not ranking up. <laughs> that was good. Twenty one. Yeah, uh, Asuma Lanez is it was was famous for stopping the 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 Archean conflict about well almost a century ago. And do I know that she's from Primus Garden? Uh, you don't know that she's from Primus Garden. Okay. But you 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 know that she is uh the she is one of like the main like training um, she's one of the main trainers for new apprentices of the Runeforger Order. Well, her son was friends with uh, the last champion, Terak. Terax, yeah. Terax, yeah. <coughs> and she's like, okay, um, so it, do you want us to look into who this son is? Yeah, um, maybe... It'd be good to talk to him, actually, to, you know, see if he could tell me about the champion and maybe anything that. Okay, I, I can I can see what I can find. Um, anything else? I think it was one of the last people that Terok spoke to before he... Uh, died Mhm Okay well um I I'll, I'll get to look looking at that I already gave there was coordinates that he was giving him Oh okay um, um it was the uh, last place he was at before he died Um I gave him to uh well no I haven't asked him to look it up yet I wanted to talk to you first Okay, then then we we can look it up. Is it co- are the coordinates familiar to you? Uh, uh, it was it was the last place that he. It was the place that he died. Yeah. Okay. Was it a significant place? Do you think? Well, wherever a champion dies, I guess would be significant. Okay, yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> she she kind of looked at me. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, it was on Synchronous. Um, yeah, I would say I, it in was... In Synchronous? Yeah. So I would say that's uh, sig- significant. Well, why is that significant? I mean, couldn't it be anywhere, anywhere else? Yeah, I would just... I don't know why. Why would he be in Synchronous? I don't know. Well, I mean, there's command colonies everywhere. He was a part of Core Command, and he was helping with liberating. There's many command colonies in Synchronous, so maybe he was at one of the command colonies. That's yeah. That's possible. Okay. So, go ahead and get Quiet to look to look into it while we go through on this mission. Sound good? Perfect. And you guys begin to head out. Oh, oh. You, do you, wait, okay. do you want to continue the conversation or do you want to? No. Okay, yeah. Go back you, to the you go back to the pi- seat. piloting seat and as you continue to pilot, you approach the quantum force. I'm going to tell Quive if he can ask him if he can look up the coordinates and then also the name of her son. Mm. You guys begin to travel through the quantum forest. I'd like you to roll me a discipline check. 16. 
I could not tell on my big dice if it was a six or a nine. I still can't tell. What is it? <laughs> because it's six. What'd you say, discipline? What? Though? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 17. 17? Huh. <laughs> you f- f- flow through the quantum force. I have a sound for this, I believe. <laughs> if I can find the cue. There it is. No, you go, you're just going through the quantum force. <laughs> no, as as you go through the quantum force, you see the the shapes and uh, all these geometric patterns begin to fall through and go into almost like almost like you're falling into this infinitely small point, and then you appear on the other side of it, and. As you appear on the other side, you see a world there and what looks like multiple ships in a battle. You see these, all these pods and, and, and vessels <laughs> blasting blasting at each other um, I would like you to roll me a piloting check as you see Quive goes and turns on the stealth field he's like oh shit oh shit oh shit I might have gotten us a little bit too close mm, great um 21 21 mm-hmm. you t- begin to pilot oh, like you you fly the ship away from the the battle that's going on and you see uh, Quive is able to turn on the stealth field and it seems it seems the battle is pretty distracting can we, can we see who's fighting who is who does it uh fight? it looks like core command uh, ships along with along with counter command and they are are fighting each other in the middle of space. Um, probably... Probably about, like... Like, 50,000 kilometers above the atmosphere of this world. And as you begin to pilot it over towards the... the planetary... the planet's atmosphere to the coordinates that are specified on the actual scanner, you see Quive begin to make a planetary scan of, of, the, of the of the world. He's like, "All right, all right. Um, you're going to want to to go in carefully into the atmosphere. There, there, some of the clouds are actually frozen solid." Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> and. Uh, I would like you to roll me a another piloting check. And he's going to he's going to assist you so you have advantage on this. So, so I have talent, I get a plus three. You have you have talent in it, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you get a plus three. Twenty-five. You fly through, and you see Clive turns, tries, goes, turn on. Oh, he does. Uh, he turns on the the shield as it shields you, and you fly through the atmosphere. As you as you glide down, you you bump into a few of the clouds as you see like chunks of, of solid ice break off from them and you continue to fly and 
you see the stealth field zoof, shimmers out because of that. Oh. It's like, he's like, crap, ah! And you see the systems all zoof, zoof, begin to go haywire. You see the c- uh, commander rushes rushes up. He's like, it's like, what the hell is happening? Like, uh, we, we, we got close to a, a, a skirmish uh, out out in space, and, and now we're trying to land the ship properly without without dying and being caught. And uh, he is able to turn back on the stealth field. Good, good. And I would like you to roll me another piloting check as you guys continue to fly down and you begin to see what looks like a large base. Um, and there is a... It looks like there's a full-on like ground ground troop war going uh, on. Okay. And, and he's inside. you see the coordinates are for that place. And he's inside there, okay. Yes. So it seems like this is a big mission, and you guys are kind of like in it. Well, like the infiltrators. Are yes. We even, are, we even, are we even qualified to be infiltrators? <laughs> I mean, you're assuming so, because the Admiral specifically asked you mm-hmm. to do this. Was I was I supposed to roll something? Yeah, another piloting check. Uh, I was like, as as you're dies. as you're going to land on this on this planet without being detected by their scan their their scanners. Um, nineteen. Nineteen. Mm-hmm. You fly down, going. And landing right off, like off to the side where you where you see like a, a large uh, a large hill of, of just snow, um, up, away from the actual base, to the side, hopefully where there's no one around, and the ship goes and lands, and you land. You don't think anyone detected you. The stealth was on, and stealth field was on, and Viking comes out. It's like, and he's he's itching the back of his head. It's like, what the hell happened? I felt like a bump, and then a little shake, and now we're, we're where? Uh, we have landed. Now we're gonna go inside that base where there is a full-on battle happening. Everyone get your gear. And you see everyone begins to gear up. You gear up ready with everything that you've mm-hmm. that you've got. And you go over to the the craft bay doors and it opens up. And you see there's snow blistering through. I'm gonna ask uh Quiet first. Like, is there is there anything you can give us to maybe be able to go in there better undetected? I mean, do we? we I'm, I'm. I don't have like a full. I'd have to have a full generator like that is built with full stealth technology. Um, do do you have a stealth field? My mind is just so in pieces. I cannot remember. You you don't remember if you have a stealth field? It should be on your armor. I do not. I have four mind slots though. But I I thought you bought a field. Didn't you buy a field? Thought I did too. So okay. I... Does it cost money? It yes, anything. it costs ninety oh. volts. Ninety? Yeah. I thought I bought. I I could have sworn that you that you got one. You usually get fields, so I I, I always assume that you got one, and and also you'd have to get a tech generator in order to get the the field, the cell field. So that co- would cost you a total of hundred ninety volts, because a tech generator is hundred volts, I believe. You can check if you like um but as you guys do go out um i would your does your armor have have the environmental 
function on it because if not then he would actually give you an environmental pack um that's what it was because I, I bought uh mtech armor i didn't even write that down And I did not spend the money for that. That's what it was. You didn't spend the money, but you got it? No, I didn't spend the money for the environmental pack. Because that was 510. That's more than what I had for my money. Okay, yeah. He he goes and is like, I, I have one environmental pack to spare, but that... Does everyone else have one? And Viking's like, yeah. I, I came prepared. And Commander's like, I, I, I yeah, I, I, I have one. Okay, then I will take it. And he's like, he's like, okay, don't, don't let it get destroyed, okay? Of course. Which means protect your armor. Does it add to my armor? Do I no, it doesn't add to your armor, but it basically creates a, a, a field in order to, in order to protect you from the cold and uh, in certain things. And so you you put on the environmental pack and it <laughs> creates an invisible layer all over your body, and you walk out into these this blistering blizzard as you as you guys begin to <laughs> trudge up this this snowy hill, and you get off and like kind of like hide over this hill, and you look over and you see the massive battle raging in the distance and as this happens I'd like you to roll me a perception check Sixteen for a perception? Yes. As you look down through this area, it's really difficult to see any like any outlines. All you see is is like beams and blasts and explosions off off in the distance and then uh, you don't see any any openings to this massive bunker um, but you do notice that that there are no guard like there are no guard patrols around it seems like the entire like there's an entire distraction going on with this with this battle uh you see the commander looks over. It's like, all right, we're going to go down there. Um, everyone, prepare yourselves. It's time to see what we can do. And you guys begin to approach. I'd like you to roll me a stealth check. One stealth, two stealths, three stealths. What'd you get? 22, and then I'm going to add the... Stealth field? Yeah. <laughs> 23. You rolled a one, two? I wrote on one on on their stealth check. Oh, on their st- stealth the field. Fields? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she she gets one. I wrote another another one. What that the? F- wow. <laughs> you guys begin to glide down. Now I have to see if anyone sees you guys.
you guys, as you guys slide down this, this large snow hill, the blasts of the battle gets louder. And you get closer and closer to it, closer to the, to the bunker. As you begin to scale across the, the bunker, uh, the bunker walls, you begin to search for any signs of an entrance away from the battle. Uh, I would like you to roll me another perception check as you're searching. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. You see, you see out of the corner of your eye, a uh, what looks like a, a, a back entrance that leads downward. And as as that happens, you see Quive is is doing a full scan of, of of the bunker to see if he can get through the the actual walls of this bunker and and get a layout a full full layout of, of where where you guys can go. Um, and also, he's trying to ha- hack. As point well. to the back entrance, like you, silently. You point to the to the back entrance, and then you see two uh, two guards rushing out of it, and then rushing over towards you guys. You guys are all you guys all have a stealth field on, so they don't notice you, um, and they rush past you, and it, it's very close to a point where like. One of them kind of turns over and, and looks at you guys for a second, but it but the the blast from the battle is so so distracting that they're they're rushing out to go help their their allies. And Asla's just like, okay, okay, let's, let's continue going. And you guys go around the corner. The blasts get quieter, and the blizzard begins to quiet down as you begin to walk down the corridors of this bunker. You and the entire squadron are continuing down this corridor. You suddenly hear Perfect. I got it. And you see Quive is kind of adjusting something on his codex. It's like Alright, um, let me see if I can find the ping. Uh, let's see. And Perfect. Alright, I have a I have a location. Good job. Alright, let's follow you. And Viking's like, oh, I don't like this. I want to fight something. Well, he, the Admiral did say that we can destroy the base, so do you have any grenades on you? He's like, I brought a few. Like, then we'll, we'll plant some grenades on the way. All right, sounds good. And as you continue moving forward, I'd like you to roll me another... Discipline will check. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ah. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. As you move forward through the space following Quive's lead you suddenly begin to see (laughs) you feel you're inside another memory Terax is heading down a corridor that looks similar to this one. (laughs) 
And then you feel something <laughs> shake your shoulder and you look over and you see Asla looks at you and she's like, are you okay? And you, you, you just stopped. And you feel like there's something that you needed to see there. But it's gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, well, we're gonna keep moving forward. Okay, if, if you have another one of those, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake you up. I, like I don't, I don't care. We, we need to do this mission. Okay. And she continues moving forward, but you have this feeling like you needed to see that. Yeah, you continue moving forward, and it seems... What do you do? Um, as, as a... Yes? It, it was gonna be a, um, another vision. Yeah, I know, but we, we can't afford that right now. We need, we need to move. And what if it would like, help us like, if he's been here? Quiv is looking around and is like, do you really think so? We we, we don't have time. We're, if he's been here before. But we're in the middle of, of the mission. And Viking's like, can you guys stop talking so loud? Jesus. And I'd like you to roll me another self check. As Quive hears, was like, someone's coming. They each turn on another stealth field. That helped. I better get a fucking eight this time. A one again. Again. Really? Yep. That was great. What's the total? Wasting my stuff. Um. <sighs> oh, that was good. That was really good. I got a twenty. A twenty? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna spend my stamina. And I am going to use quick reflexes. Okay. I, I would have regained my stamina from the last time, right? Being on the yes, and yes, everything. Okay, <clears throat> then I'm still at that. Add another D8, so twenty plus eight. King yes, Jesus. Twenty eight. Yes. You see, Quive disappears. Viking kind of fades into the wall. You can kind of see a, sh- a shimmer. Um, same with Asla. You also just disappear. And you see figures walking. Can I have my vision now that we're walking through. <laughs> um, as as they walk, they walk through. You see Viken kind of tw- twitching a little bit, and he's like, Argh. and he, he you see he's antsy, and. Um, the, the two guards are, are walking through and they be there speaking to each other. You hear one of them say, Why can't we go fight? I don't know. We, we need to go fight them. Just calm down, calm down. We, we need to stay in here. This is very important. Echolo specifically said that this is one of the most important missions that we need to, we need to handle. If we don't guard this, if we don't guard them, we won't. We will basically lose everything. We'll have. To, we'll start from the beginning. This sucks. And they continue moving forward. I was like, back the wa- that way that we were walking. They, uh, walking past us, right? They're 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 walking they're walking past us and and like well, going uh, yeah. The, the way we were going? Going towards the play, the path that Quive was taking, you guys. Okay. Yes. Quive is like, we need to go that way. We, 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 we. Okay. Yeah, they're 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 out of earshot now. They didn't they didn't see anything. Um, and Asla's like, oh, crap. Viking's like, I can go take them out right now if you want me to. We still have some time left on our. Okay, well, 
And as was like, okay, go take them down quietly. And Viking's like, with pleasure. And he goes, <laughs> he goes over, and you see, Southway walks up. Use two takedown methods. You see, one of them gets pulled pulled down, and the other was like, "Uh," and Viking goes up and does two strikes on him. Completely just and snapping his neck and falling to the ground. And Viking's like, Thank you, Asla. And she comes up and says, That's Commander. Alright, let's keep moving. Clive, your lead. Clive continues moving forward. As you move forward, I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. you take another you take another left turn, then you go up to what looks like a panel on, on a wall with, with a do- with the door shut. And Quive goes up to it. Easily opens up the, the door as it slides open. You see a guard inside the door open. Viking and all all of you shake and you see he he goes to pull out a weapon. Uh, what do you want to do? Do I? Uh, uh, so we're gonna. So you, you're gonna basically get. I do head start. Yeah, basically. So okay. you, you you can you can do that. Um, I do head start. Okay. What are you What are you gonna do? Um. Let's see. Uh, it's not less than ten feet for me. Hurry up, because Viking's getting head start as well. He attacks twice. You see him go, go and strike him right in in the chest, and and then hit him on the back of his head, and he falls to the ground, knocked out. As you as you were about to do whatever you were gonna do, but Good. it seems like Viking is pretty damn quick. I'm gonna grab one of the guards and also bring them in with us. Oh, the guard is inside. The, no, the two that were outside. Oh, you you go and start pull, pulling the guard. He's like, and and Commander as as looks over, it's like. Good. Good thinking. And you pull the gar- the guards inside, and it the thing closes and begins to lift up. And are you going to search the guards? Yes. <laughs> okay, I would like you to roll me a simple perception check. Search both of them if no one else is going to. Yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Um, you find two. Well, you you find you find three volts chips on on each of them. Well, what well, well, one volts chip each? So three three volts chips. Uh, you'd have to get a volts transfer device to to transfer oh, okay. them. Three volts chips on each. Well, no, three volts chips per person. Sorry. So only three total. Volts? Three volts chips. You don't know how much are on the volts chips until right. you transfer it. Okay. Um, you also find a, a tech blaster and a tech blade, and you also uh, find on them uh, a pack full of med waves. I'm going to grab a pack of med waves. And there are a total. Th- there are like there. There are three. Technically, e- each of them has a pack. Um, and there's three med waves in each pack, so a total of nine med waves. You 
you can take just one one of the packs and just put all the my, my waves in in that single pack if you want. Because okay. because there's ten slots in the pack. <laughs> And you also find a uh, a key, a a card key. Okay. Oh, um, I I searched all three cards. What? Did I search all three cards? Yes. Yes. Okay. And as as that happens, you guys, it it stops. And a core is like, all right, I got into the system. Now we're gonna go straight to a core light. And did I just call him a core? I think I just said. <laughs> uh, yeah, Qu- uh, Clive just just uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a Freudian slip, I guess. <laughs> no, uh, it it opens up to what looks like a uh, a brig center and you see multiple different uh chambers where there are there are like energy fields open that there, there are no people inside them but as you continue moving forward <coughs> you see i would like you to roll uh, another stealth check the the field is is going to be turning off like in just a second But everyone gets one more use out of it. Oh, they have three cell fields on theirs? Yes. I just rolled a one on the D12 and then a one on on the D8. Sorry. Go. Also, Bo. Talk close to the mic. Who's Boo? Who's Boo? You are. You are my Boo. Uh, 26. 26? Okay. As you move forward, you see there are two guards standing at one of the... One of the actual, uh... Like, prison cells. One of the, one of the cells. And... As... They look over, they have to see. Doesn't see. Doesn't see. Wow. Vikings stealth field shimmers a bit. Aslan looks over, he's like uh, and and he's just like going up against the wall. And the guards seem to be distracted, or it looks like they're distracted for a second. But it's more like they're kind of like z- zoning out, and they just uh, and then you hear and someone steps out, and you see a Nugonian step out. It's like, what are you doing? Wake up! And you see a, him, and I kind of slap. One of the guards is like, oh, sorry, sorry, sir. Stay awake. Stay vigilant. They will be coming. And he looks over. It's like, ah, oh, let me see. He looks over. It's like, in fact, I think they're already here. And he he's like, ah, and he points straight towards Viking. And Viking's like, crap. I like you to roll me initiative. Uh, head start. <laughs> head start. <laughs> you sound like Jaren now. I do. <laughs> Jaren's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, Amanda, <laughs> you're smart." <laughs> so you're going head start. Um, so we're gonna do. We're gonna do the squadron battle. So, what's your agility? It's twelve. Twelve. Okay, so twelve plus another eight plus another ten. 
class, so now they're six. So... Yeah, you guys are gonna go first. So that means that you got you can go on on the turn of of your squadron. Okay, so this is going to be the the movement stage. And Commander Asla says, "Okay, move forward." And and she just is like, "We're going to move forward." So you're going to get a uh, you can get advantage on your offensive forms on this turn as well. Awesome. So you get to go first, though. You and and Viking is also doing a head start. Um, if we were in, well, I would get advantage, so I can't get advantage twice, right? What do you mean? Like if we were, because it says after a successful stealth check for sneak attack. But I already like we just rolled. You stealth you you, you already had a successful stealth check. The only person who didn't have a successful stealth check is Viking. So right now. They only see. They technically only see Viking. Okay. And Vi- but Viking is gonna rush up, and he's going to make three strikes with a field assailant. First one is going to be against one of the guards, hitting the first strike. Then the second one is going to be against the Nugonian. Hitting that strike. <laughs> and then the third one is going to be against the Nugonian. This Nugonian is not it is not gonna be having a fun time right now. <laughs> uh so Though all three strikes hit, one of them goes against one of the, one of the guards. So, first one against the guard. You see, he 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 does a stun function on the guard, and you see it it, it kind of zaps the guard for a second with 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 a tech blade, and he and he goes around and he takes his his, uh, his tech sword. And he goes to slice twice into the Nugonian. And that's going to be... Okay, that is 13 plus 6. 19 plus another 11. So 20 point, 30 points of damage. Um, as you see, the Nugonian... The Nugonian's armor... Negates some of it. Uh, it looks like he has some uh, quantum tech armor on, as it negates six points of it. And the Nigoni is like, ah, ah, attack them! And uh, 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 he's like, he's like, attack him! And the it is now your turn. Did I get a head start? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna use. Dual wield, so I can make three extra three offensive forms. So three three offensive forms. Two, like it would be two on your main hand and one on your on, on your okay. offhand. Okay. Um, and I yes, I'm going to. Um, I'm also going to use uh, Field Assailant. Okay, uh, attack. you have to, you have to choose. Attack first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to choose who who you're going to attack. So who who are you attacking first? Because you see, you saw that Viken uh, stunned one of them, one of the guards, and then attacked the Nugonian twice. Okay, I'm going to attack the the guard, the other guard. The other guard. Yeah. The other guard is going to be around them. So it, it, basically, you're down a corridor. And one guard is is the one guard that Viking attack is is nearest to you. You'd have to get around the Nigonian in order to. Oh, so they are they're more than ten feet away from me. They are more than 20, ten. Then feet I away. will actually do lunging strike. Okay. So. So we'll acro- you'll... acrobatics check first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
And I believe dual wield gives you a bonus to to your attack roll. Yes. One, is it one of your attack rolls? Let me check. I have it right here. You can make three like like weapon. Twenty three for the acrobatics. Wait. Um. What kind of weapon are you using? Um. My medium medium weapon. It's you. Do you have talent in in dual world? Yes. Okay. Cool. So you can use a medium weapon. And add it to um, attack roll. And you add you add the feats rank bonus to the attack rolls. So my acrobatics. So you technically are getting a plus. Well, what, what's the what's the feats rank bonus? Uh, three. Three, and then what's what's your head start rank bonus? Uh, three. So you're getting an, an additional plus six to, to these. The to, yeah. Yeah, but I haven't even attacked it. So my acrobatics though is a ten, twenty-two, twenty-three. 23 total, like, uh, added? No, not acrobatics here. You're, you're doing a, ma- I a medium. Do the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 20, uh, 23? Yeah, you are able to l- lunge forward. Okay. Um, and the roll. I'm also adding the 8. Plus 6. Plus everything else. Wait, lunging strike does that. Let me just do this, actually. We don't add agility, right? To the attack? To the attack roll, you, you, you add agility. Two, six, seven, 27 plus six. I'm going to say I hit. That's 33. Thirty-three again. Yeah, you 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 definitely hit. Sorry, I'm I'm reading the lunging strike, making sure it's. Yeah, yeah, okay. And you have talent in that too, mm-hmm. so you're gonna add another D eight. D eight. So you quickly lunge forward, rushing up, and then what's the damage on it? Why are you rolling a D twelve? Not the damage. No. <laughs> um, D ten, right? Yeah. Eight. Eight plus three. Eleven. Eight plus eight. You don't. You don't get to add the head start bonus to your damage. Only to the for- to the attack roll. Oh, that's right. So, eight. and uh, also, I don't. Uh, does dual wield let you add it to the damage? Yes. No, only to the attack roll. Oh, just kidding. Yes. So, just eight. That sucks. Eight points of damage against. Yeah, I will. Make against which one? Eight. The the one that the one that was already attacked by Viking. No, the because- one that I lunged at. Okay, well, you didn't specify if no, it was... the further back one. The further back one, okay. Um, okay, yeah, you, you are able to lunge straight up there and strike him as that happens. It's um, for my dual wield, making three offensive forms, so do I have to roll it three times? You, you, roll a, you, roll, you can roll two more attacks. I get to add it to it every single attack. You add plus six to every single attack, an additional plus six to the t- to the two attacks because you have it because it's still technically head start and and the dual. So go ahead. Uh, do I get to add it the lunging strike to no, all three attacks? No, 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 okay, o- only to the one. Okay. Why are you running with two details? No, that was a two D. Go. Is that a one? That was a one. Uh, 15, 
18 plus 6, 24. 24? Yeah. 9. Uh, 24 misses. As he, as you see him dodge out of the way, you you still have one more attack. Yeah. Okay. Don't 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 give me the sour sour face when you have one more attack. <laughs> they haven't even gone yet. <laughs> uh, that one is gonna hit. That one doesn't hit. Twenty. Twenty-seven plus three. 27 plus 3. This which is 30. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you you hit. Go ahead and roll damage. It's just gonna be the one. D10. Yeah. D10, D10. Did you get the D10? Yeah. Nine. Class your plus your uh medium weapon. Uh, 14. 14? You go and strike a second time. You see it dance two times into his armor. Oh, I didn't add my medium weapon to the first one, so... 8 plus 5. What do you mean? 13. I didn't add my other oh. 5 to the other two. Okay, yeah, yeah you, you dent in, into his armor uh, twice. As that happens, it is... Now... Your guys' turn again because of the, he- the head start. But you, you no longer get the head start bonus. So, Viking. What? It's, it's Viking's turn. Okay. Vi- well, no, it, it's technically. You, you can still choose what you want to do right now. I hit him again. Okay, go ahead. I can barely get the hit. Again, and Vikings are actually going to use another field assailant. Oh, wow! Damn, for such an asshole, he's actually really good at what he does. <laughs> He might actually kill the Nugonian. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry guys, I'm going to change the music for you. There you go. Your field is saying that you roll twice, right? If you're going to attack again. You you just get you basically get another attack on someone that you've already attacked on the turn. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So go twice. Okay, I'm gonna attack him again. Uh, I'm not gonna use dual, I guess. Okay. What was dual du- wheels ranked at at three, right? So you've already used one use of dual of the dual feet. So, technically, if you did dual wield, you could attack four times on your turn. If you use field assailant and dual wield on, on the same thing. Isn't that six times? No. What? No. Field assailant only gives you one, one extra form per yeah, turn, so. and then and then and then dual wield gives you three forms instead of two forms. So you'd have three forms plus an extra because of the field assailant. So it'd be four. But go. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just going to attack him using field assailant. And I get to add the D8s. You also see uh, Commander Azla pulls out a gun. For field assailant, I get to only add the D8 to the first attack or the second attack? To the second attack. Only only on second. only one one attack. Okay. Twenty-seven. 
22 22 He is able to bl- is able, able to parry down your your attack and then he's going to go for a riposte against you this this guard uh which is going to be an extra d6 uh so are you defending what are you what how are you defending uh dodge okay go ahead roll a dodge check I, I, I love this battle music. Uh, 20? 20? Yeah, you easily dodge all the way. Yeah, and, then I'm gonna, and then I get to attack again, right? Because field is saying Yes, you, you get, get to attack again. It's just because he, he used his, his repost against you. He parried it. You know. dun, 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 dun. Uh, 26? 26 on your, on oh, your field. Oh, wait. You see, Aslush fires off two shots. One misses. The other one barely hits. Dealing. You see, you see it fires straight into the shoulder, the shoulder blade of of the one that that Viking had hit. Um, that is about to go and hit Viking, and it get gets shot. At, Asla's f- uh, stealth field falls down. Um, and what would what, you what damage on your thing? Uh, I hit, right, because you, you didn't tell me. What, 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 what? 32. Yeah, that I hit. hit. Yeah, obviously. If you get above a 30, you, you definitely hit. <laughs> if you're attacking the grunts, that is. Yeah, um... Agility is not added to the damage, right? What? Agility no. is not added to the no, damage. No, no, no. It's just the dice and then It's the, the dice and, and your form bonus. Your form bonus. Seven. Seven. You horrible. You strike into his armor again. You see he you're you're definitely damaging his his armor enough. Um and as that happens, uh you see Vi Viking strikes three times into the Nugonian, who is and he falls to the ground and Viking's like and he, and he goes and, and uh, he's about to stab into the Nugonian on the ground uh, as that happens though Clive is going to go over and he's going to try to use a stun on the one that you're attacking he goes goes to fire you for fire fire oh he crit he. and he is able to shoot out another stun straight at the guy that that you're attacking and you see him uh is he's being stunned um and as that happens, you hear Asla yell out, "Don't kill him!" And then Viking, as he's about to strike into him, the, the Nigonian, it is their turn, and they go to place their hand up straight at Viking's temple. I'm gonna try a probe. And succeed. And as that happens, Viking stands up and then he rushes at you and he goes to strike you twice. Viking? Yes. Successful probe, that's nice. I'm gonna dodge. He crits. You might wanna, uh, quick reflexes. Um, that would be. Cause I 
have it as talent. Next time, let me look at it before you grab it. That was good. <laughs> was it worse? Yes. Because you didn't nice. let me look at it. <laughs> uh, I am probably going to fail this, so I'll use evasion. Um, uh, 18. Yeah, he definitely hit. On the first strike. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't add the D8. Plus four. No, he still hits. Got a 30. Cool. Oh. And then the second one is a 25 to hit. Um, but the first strike goes and deals 11 points of damage so it, it would deal uh, 2 points to your armor threshold uh, what's your resistance on your armor? My resistance? yes resistance your armor should have resistance oh that's what you asked yes what is the resistance? Yes, oh, what is the resistance? and slashing. Okay, so you take only take one point to your armor threshold. So you said you did the rating first. I know, because I, I, I know that your rating is a 22, so then I didn't go past 22 on, on the attack damage. So I go straight to your armor threshold. And with that, it was a 25 to hit for your se for the second strike. Quick reflexes only go on the first one, the first dodge. You have to spend another sta uh, more, more stamina to get, get it again. Uh, twenty-four. So he hits again, dealing another. Uh, yeah, an another one point of damage to your armor threshold. And you see he's stri striking into into your armor. Um, as that happens, the Nugonian stands up, and the other the other two guards uh, go to strike at you. But they're stunned. Well, one of them, because stun just means that you don't have a maneuver, mm. so they can't like use their maneuver on on their turn. Uh, so they're gonna strike twice. Uh, one is going to be a 21 to hit, the other one is going to be 18 to hit. And the other guy is going to fire off two shots over towards Asla. <laughs> Both of them are natural ones. Cocked. As long as able to dodge out of the way of those two shots. What'd you roll? Oh, they're shooting at me? Yeah. Tw the guard that was that you were attacking hits you twice. 121, 118. Twenty-one for the first one. You are able to to barely dodge out of the way. Twenty-five for the second one. Twenty-five for the second one. You are able to dodge out of the way of the, of the second one. Um, as that happens, it is now your guys' turn again. So, what are you going to do? 
Viking has to try to roll a, dis a discipline will check to get out of it. Which he fails. So he's still in it. Hasla is going to fire off two shots over towards guard. Another hits. Ooh, and another hits. You see one one charges up and fires off. He uh she fires straight into the guy's neck and you see him uh, falls to the ground to one knee. Um as that happens uh Mr. Clive goes over pulls out a little baton and he goes to whack the guy and knock him out. Which he the the, the guard that fall, fell to one knee, he's able to, to dodge off the way of the of the first strike. And he dodges out of the way of the second strike. Um what are you doing? Okay. She didn't stab the one that was closest to me, right? Who? Asla's not stabbing anyone. Who the stab the one? Oh, shot the one in the neck. That was that was the one that was next. That was next to him, right? That was that was the one that Viking hit for the first time. Okay. And I'm gonna attack the other one again. Seven. Twenty-seven to hit. Hits. I swear. Four. Huh? Four. Plus your damage bonus. Are you forgetting where your damage bonus is? Medium weapon? Medium weapon? Nine. Nine. Okay, nine points of damage. <laughs> Are you getting tired? I don't know, I'm just blinking. <laughs> as as you uh, you go to strike at him, you see it... it <laughs> Breaks a piece of his armor off, and he's exposed now. Go ahead and roll an another attack if you're if you're going to attack. Are you going to attack again? Yeah. Okay. You also see that the Nagonian is still controlling Viking. Too, but you're still attacking him. It's guard. And the Nagonian doesn't look healthy because of what Viking was doing to him. But if I attacked him, one, well, I can't use another form to attack someone else, right? You can use dual world. <clears throat> yeah, I can use that again. Yes. And if you use dual world, then you can also use field assailant because you had or you attacked him. I already didn't attack the Nagonian yet. I know, I'm saying you can use Dual Wield to attack again and then use Field Assailant to attack something that you've already attacked this turn. Oh, I see, I see. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So you can do two attacks on the guard and then two attacks on the Nagonian. Okay. So do that. Okay, go ahead. You just crit? No. This one sounds like Star Wars. It's the trumpets. 
I would assume it's the trumpet. Uh, 30. 30. Yeah. Um, On your attack against the, the, the guy that you just hit. So this is your second form. Yeah. Okay. Well, but... Oh, you're, you're going to go attack the Nagonian? Because that will give this guy who... who attack the, the guard. Okay, you, you attack the guard. Uh, I'm just wondering. But this isn't using my... Feel assailant my mm. one time as my attack. No, this is not using field assailant. Okay. okay. And it was actually twenty five. Not five. Twenty five. Uh okay. Does that hit him? That hits, yes. Roll your damage, D10. Seven. Seven points of damage. You go and strike straight into where his armor had been exposed, and you see blood gush out as he ah, and he falls to the, to like to one knee. Um, he looks pretty hurt. He looks pretty hurt. This guy. Uh, and you're gonna attack the Nagonian. Yeah. Okay. As you go to attack the Nagonian, you see Viking goes to defend him. Oh, I'm gonna attack the Nagonian. Viking's going to be defending him. That's a waste. I... What? I... What? I, I, again? I... He's probed. <laughs> what do you? What do you expect? <laughs> You need to let me see the roll and stop, stop picking up the dice when you after you roll. Gosh. What is the total? Is it a 19? Also, this would be your dual wield, so you'd get a you get a plus three bonus to this attack. Twenty one. Twenty one. You hit. <clears throat> you're able to you're able to get past Viken as as he goes to try to parry you down, but you're but you. <laughs> Swing your your ar- your arm around and and flutter a little bit, flutter your wings, and you s- go to strike at the Newgonian. Go oh my fucking god! I rolled a d10. I got another one on it, but I'm gonna actually roll a d12 this time. What do you mean? To what? attack, right? So you got a one. You have to tell me the, what, the, what the damage is. That was a D10. I actually What's the it. damage? That was the damage. You hit. That's right. So one plus five. Six. Six. Okay. You are you going to strike his arm? He's like, ah! Protect me! And you go ahead and roll another attack. This is your field assailant, right? So you're adding your, you're adding your D8. Come on, he, he he has low health, so he's literally like about to die if you hit him. What's the total? Eighteen plus twelve is thirty. Yes, you hit. Now roll, roll for damage. Which is a D10 plus a D8. Plus five. Oh 
my god. Guys, hate me. My damage dice hates me. How do you want to do this? Finally. I'm gonna go up above him. And like, go down. From the air. Fly? Yeah, you flip above him and you, as you're going through your front flip, you strike into the back of the Nugonian's head and you see blood gush out and you fall to the fall to the ground and you you land kind of like you know superhero landing uh, and and the Nugonian and Vi- the Nugonian stops and he collapses to his to his knees and Viking shakes his head he's like uh, uh, and he puts his 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 hand to his head. He's like, oh, "What the hell just happened?" And the new is like, "You, you, funny, funny." And you see the new falls to the ground as the one guard who is bleeding out, or the other one, who, the the one who is is still up, um, who's bleeding out. The other one got knocked out. Well, no, actually, no, he didn't get knocked out. So the two guards are still awake. I st- I went to hit that one, and then that one you said was bleeding out. Yeah, he, 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 was, ble- he was bleeding out on his, on his knees. The, the other one was able to dodge out of the way of, of the, uh, but the attacks. But it's their turn. Yeah. Our, our team. Yes, it won't. Actually, no, it is. I was waiting for you to finish. Oh. Um, and it is now technically their turn as they... Are gonna make themselves vulnerable to try to call for backup. You guys can take reactionary attacks, seven stamina. I will do that. I will do that. And I'll do it on the one I've already attacked. Okay. They're both doing it? What? They're both trying to. See yes, they are. Viking misses his crit. first attack. Finally. You hit. Oh. And Azla is going to crit. 29. And hit. Jeez, a lot of ones today. Yeah, Just I so did. many Another ones. One. What'd you get total? Okay, my first attack. Uh, 29. You, no, you only you get, get one attack. attack. Okay, 29. And wh- what's the damage? And... Finally. Yep, okay. Two hits. What'd you get? 13. 13? You are able to knock this guy out. The other guy gets knocked out by Asla and and Clive as that ends. And Viking is like, <sighs> you see, he's he's struggling with his head. And Asla's like, are, are you okay? What the hell happened? Why did you just start attacking her all of a sudden? I don't know. And the thing got into my head. Uh, I was seeing things. And Kwai was like, Guys? Um, and he points inside the room that the Nugonian had, wa- had, had walked out of. And you see... What looks like... Another Nugonian who is asleep in a bed. And Asla walks up to him. He's like... Well, she, she, she kind of goes up to him and checks his pulse. He's stable. He looks comfortable. Um, okay, we, we need to take him out of here. Viking? Viking's like, yeah, yeah, huh? Uh... uh do you pack the thing that I asked you to make? And 
you see Clive is, look, looks over is like, yep, um, I, I should have it in here. And he goes and takes out a large cube. And he's like, cool, okay. Um, and this is safe, right? And he's like, it, it, it should be. It, I, I, I used it just exactly how the the ESBs usually work, but I configured it to be uh, a self-stabilizer using uh, medways. All right, I, I don't know what that means. He should be stable if he, if, he's, if he's in it. Okay, and he goes up, and you see Viking takes it, and he presses a few buttons, and then it... And you see a core light fades away, and he disappears completely. Is he in the thing? Is he in the cube? He should be, yes. Completely stable inside there. Um, we didn't know if he was going to be tortured or anything, but... It, and Aslan looks over and like, it didn't seem like he was being tortured. Do Nigonians usually probe mines? Like other Nigonians' mines? They're not, we're not able to probe other Nigonians' mines, so I don't know exactly what was going on here. It sounded to me like he was being tortured. But, like, okay, well, we, we need to get out of here. Are we at a counter command base? Yeah, I, I believe so. That, those were counter command forces outside. Mm. And you guys begin to head out. I'd like you to roll me a stealth check. Just one stealth check, please. Crit? Yes. Okay, yeah, you guys are able to make it outside, back outside, and you see the blizzard. And you return to your ship as the battle seems to be dying down after you have after you notice that Asla sent out a message. And you see like the core command troops are beginning to retreat and you hear like you hear uh, chanting and cheering uh, on on the side of counter command, but you see, as you guys get up the hill, you see counter command beginning to move back into the, their bunker as ships are flying off. And Asla's like, something doesn't feel right here. Why? What were we were we told for? Why we were getting this person? They have vital information apparently about. Core command that, and and you see, um, quiet look, looks over. It's like vital information. This this Nigonian was a part of the first squadron that went on and discovered the com- command colonies. He has in core command. In core command. But now he's with counter command because it doesn't seem like he was being tortured by them, so... Uh, well, I, I think we'll find out when he's when he's awake. How will you know if he wakes up in the box? Well, he, he should be sta- he, he'll be stable inside there and, and, and asleep, but we should take him out right right away. So, go, go take him out, Viking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, can... Wait. I'm gonna turn to the Clive, mm-hmm. he's Nagonian, right? Yes, he's Nagonian. Can you mm, check on him? Check on who? The 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 Nagonian? No. Viking. Oh. Like, so, can you like heal him? I, I mean, I can. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. And Viking's like, I don't need any healing. Come on, like, just stop. I'm gonna go deal deal with this and pull him out. Make sure he's he's all comfortable, so that when he wakes up, we can. What if he wakes up and does what the other one just did to you? What probe me? Yeah. I'm sure I can handle that now. Now that I know what they do, 
come on, I'm not that, I'm not that stupid. And as I was like, we didn't say that you were stupid. We're just trying to be, we're trying to make sure that you're, you're okay. I am fine. Thank you. Gosh. And he goes and begins to walk over. And Clive is like, I don't think he will want me to probe him. He's probably not going to give me his consent. Um, well, in the meantime, can you look up what else we know on... Aquar? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. And Asla looks over at you. If that's okay with you, Commander. Please go find out what you, what you can on Aquar. Of course, Commander. Then she looks over at you. Did you, you, you obviously didn't get another vision. No. Okay. I, I don't know. I just feel. Something tells me that would have helped us, but. I'm sorry, but I, I mean, I didn't want to risk it. You know. Of course. All right. Well, let's get back to the admiral and figure out all this. What all this means. Good work. And she goes and move, moves into her station, and you go to the cockpit, begin to pilot the ship off world, making sure that the stealth field is on with Quiet there, checking the systems to see what he can learn about the core light. And that's where we will end this session. That was a long one. <laughs> a very long one. Yes. Uh, but we got through it. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen? What, what do you think about all this situation? I think my dice need to be cleansed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get that, that cleanse ability. Um, that might not be the only thing. Yeah, you mean you mean? <laughs> oh, what do you, you think what of cycle? Is this? Oh, uh, one sixteen, I believe. I said for our listeners, that would take place. Bef- that would be take place after um, the episodes with a core light, right? Oh, well, after mm-hmm. Negonians live to live to be like around like fifteen hundred cycles, so they're like isn't they're. No, they're not. But it, yeah, one sixteen technically is a, literally a century after the events of the Hearts of Glory arc. If you go back to listening to the Hearts of Glory arc, which is, I believe it's thirty three to thirty five, are the entries. Mm-hmm. Then you can learn about Core Light and his squadron and how they began the command colonies. But yeah. What do you what do you think is going is is happening? I want to I want to hear the thoughts from uh, you from with with everything. You know, cause, yes. Yeah, um, I think that we are we were sent to retrieve him because he's probably seen as a as a traitor by Core Command because he joined Counter Command, right? He didn't join Counter Command. Well, he well he found there was corruption in Core Command, right? Yes, he was, he was, he was, he was, uh, being told by the, he was actually imprisoned. If you listen back on the actual, if you listen back on those, those episodes, he was imprisoned mm-hmm. by members of Core Command, specifically something about Admiral Volton. Mm-hmm. And then also, if you listen back on the Counter Command entry about Echolo Tyke, he talks about how, uh, Echolo Tyke, ends up kind of like finding out and like was was inspired and driven by uh how what the hearts of glory did and then he researched about what happened to a core light and then ended up getting fi- getting files retrieved from a an unknown sin frame that came to him and gave him specific information about how core light 
the logs that he recorded while he was imprisoned. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. You just don't know why he's at Cork Counter Command. Well, apparently, Eklotike like, uh, likes him, well, likes the Hearts of Glory specifically. And they found out that they're, they're, you were using some kind of technology to wipe people's memories away, mm-hmm. which is the prevailing theory of like why they think the core reset happened is because Core Command used this technology to wipe people's, like, it, use a crazy technology to wipe everyone's memories away. Well, he's obviously, causing the he, right already, reset. he obviously escaped prison, right? From Goy Command. Uh, if you, was taken. you listen, <laughs> listen back on those episodes and then you, he'll be, yeah, just listen back on those episodes and then you'll have better understanding of it. But also you probably shouldn't if, if you are going to continue playing as this character because then it's like it, that. Then you're gonna end up meta gaming because you because you know something and you don't remember if you know something. Uh-huh. Your character doesn't know something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that was a good session. I enjoyed it. You had a lot of stuff that you yeah. could do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, I was getting a little overwhelmed with all my skills and my feats. Yeah. It's because we haven't, we don't play enough. Mm-hmm. You used to be able to like just go like oh, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> we need to play more. Yeah, I only used Duo twice, right? I also want to play Urelli. The, the listeners know about Urelli. Yes. Okay. Well, we need we need to make food, cook, eat. It's late, but thank you all for listening. And uh, if death comes to you, may you be reborn, reborn in, in power. power. <laughs> and grace. I thank you for listening to the final session of the Champions Trilogy. Kina Jolanth will return, but for now we return to Muzo in his quest to join Kina on her directive. If you are just now joining the anthology... Check out ArthadianAnthologies.com for more content that expands this new expanding universe. You can also support the creation of this podcast by donating through the link found in the description of this episode. Until next time, travelers, be safe, stay safe, and if death comes to you, may you be reborn in power.